So in this video, I'm looking at reverse engineering the J1979 CAN bus protocol um, to find out, looking at the CAN bus alone, just the messages, how is the scan tool able to get the live data? Um, how does that, that sort of request and transmission go? Um, so I was able to set up a microcontroller with um, a CAN transceiver uh, and send various messages looking at, um, you know, I've, I've gone through on here on the OBD2 uh, Wikipedia, read through all of this, trying to get all the information of how this happens and then replicate it without the scan tool attached. Um, so at the moment I've got the ECU hooked up to the scope, um, I've got a CAN sniffer on as well. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at when when I had the scan tool attached, pressing read DTCs uh, and then watching for the messages and, and how the ECU reacts to that. Um, so what I have found so far, um, and this ECU has got various fault codes on it, I'll run you through how I've managed to replicate the scan tool um, by sending just a couple of simple CAN messages. Um, so I've got the scope on at the moment, I just run this um, and you, you can kind of see how I've got to um, finding out about these messages. So this is the IDs here, uh, that's just what's coming from the ECU and I've got the dash connected and the uh, steering column module. Um, you can see the data coming through here. Um, there's no scan tool attached at the moment but I have got the microcontroller attached which is sending the messages um, that I've copied from the scan tool essentially. Um, so if you look at the ID here, if I filter just the ones with seven, um, you can see these are all the messages that are coming through here. Um, you've got 7DF, 78, 70, 78 again, uh, and you can see the, the start of a pattern forming here. Um, but at the moment, I mean, these look like they don't mean anything. Um, and I'll show you how I came to the conclusion of what that all means. Um, so like I said, there's no scan tool. This is me purely injecting messages into the, the network. Um, so what I've done, I've taken a capture of, of this live data here. Um, and if you look here, so there's just a small snippet of that data. So up here, this is what the tool is sending uh, to request the DTCs. So the first thing we need to send is this part here. Um, now this second byte here, so it has to be this identifier here. And then this second byte, if you look on the um, Wikipedia, under service, all the modes, uh, 707 is show pending diagnostic trouble codes. So with that message going on to the network, it's a DTC request, the ECU, the first message it sends back is this one, which is here. So we're sending this, and the first thing that comes back, 78, is the ECU sending that information back. Uh, here it doesn't really look like a lot. But when you break it down here, this part here I haven't got to the bottom of yet, um, but I've started to split this up. And if you look at the fault codes here, so the first one, 0115, part of that message that it sent back, zero, sorry, this one here, 0115, um, 0110 here. 
then we need to send this second part which is here now if this part isn't sent then it won't respond to this part so when we send this one it sends back this and as you can see again 0400 the third code 0105 the fourth code and then the last one 0100 is the fifth code and then after that code is sent the ECU then sends another message which is I can only imagine I can't find any documentation on it but this part here looks like oh, a confirmation of end of transmission that's saying here that's the end of the information that you requested from these two messages so it looks quite simple um, I've looked at the um, the live data as well so I'll do another video for that um, but as you can see it's just two simple messages being sent and we get back the information that we requested and that's without scan tool attached